learning objectives include how adaptive immune response was discovered, what constitute adaptive immune response. In the previous lecture, we discussed that adaptive immunity and innate immunity are part of the immune system. Innate immunity has two lines of defense. The first is called the first line of defense, which includes the physical barriers such as skin. Uh, second line of defense included in the innate immunity, uh, macrophages, neutrophils, in other words, cells and their secretions. The third line of defense, which today we're discussing uh, about the adaptive immune response, the third line of defense is basically B cells and T cells. B cells constitute the third line of defense and T cells uh, fourth or the last line of defense. Adaptive immunity, why we call this adaptive immune response? The reason is that it adapts to the situation. Innate immunity, as we saw previously, that it does not increase in its response with the exposure to the infectious agents or antigens. But adaptive immune response has the ability to enhance itself with each exposure to the, to the same antigen. So this adapts to the situation or adapts to the need of the body. That is the reason it's called adaptive immune response. Two cells in this adaptive immunity are very important to know. One is B cells. B basically, when this immune, part of this immunity, the adaptive immune response was discovered, it was discovered because these cells were originally viewed in uh, a structure in the birds that is called bursa, bursa of Fabricius. It is a small structure located at the cloaca of the birds. And then later on, it was also, these cells were also found to be developing in the bone marrow. So B basically derived from bursa or bone marrow. And the property of these cells is that these secrete antibodies. And antibodies in scientific terminology, they're also called humor. So that is the reason we also call this humoral immunity or humoral immune response. Another population of cells called T cells is also important a part of the adaptive immunity. T cells, in other words, constitute cellular immunity. Uh, we will examine that how these T cells were discovered and how B cells were discovered later on. But it is important to know that this part of the immunity, which is adaptive immunity, is induced. It is adaptive because it is induced by the exposure of the antigen. In other words, if there is no exposure to the antigen, this part of the immunity is not there. This is how the humoral immunity was discovered. It was observed that Individuals once recovered from smallpox, diseases like smallpox, measles, or chickenpox, they become immune to reinfection with the same agent. So this was an observation, and scientists and immunologists tried to work out the science behind it, and they found that if you take the serum from these recovered individuals who recovered from these infections, you take the serum, and serum contained antibodies, which was later found, but that serum had something in it when the serum was injected into, let's say, a rat or a rabbit, and then the organism, like bacteria or viruses that caused the infection in the, in the patient, they were given to the animals. Animals were protected. They didn't die. So that observation led to the belief that serum has something in it which was later found to be antibodies. This is how humoral part of the immunity was discovered. If you look at the antibody structure, basically, as I mentioned earlier, that these molecules are secreted by B cells. This is the, the basic, very basic structure of an antibody molecule. It consists of two heavy chains, 
and two light chains, one here, one here. And these are all linked together through disulfide bonds. This part of the molecule, the antibody molecule, is called FC region, and this part here is called FAB region. FAB basically means fragment antigen binding. This part binds to the antigen. This part has some other biological activities, uh, such as binding to cells like macrophages, eosinophils, and also it fixes complement, which is a protein of the innate immunity that when it gets activated, it results in creating a hole um, in the organisms and the organisms releases its content and dies or gets lysed. Other part of the immunity, which is a cellular immunity and what we, know, we now know as T cells, they were discovered with the observations that when scientists were working on tissue grafting or skin grafting, uh, and they were experimenting with the, 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 the mice and uh, rats, they discovered that if you remove the thymus from these animals, these grafts are not rejected. And the uh, observations, these observations later, uh, they led to the belief or led to the to the science behind, you know, these skin graft rejections, that thymus basically is helpful in creating or developing T cells. And T cells are needed for rejection of these skin grafts. So that is how these T cells were discovered as part of the adaptive immune response. Adaptive immunity had B cells and T cells as their component. T cells were discovered uh, with the observation that skin grafts were rejected. And when thymus was removed, um, the skin was not uh, rejected. The skin grafts were not rejected. So that's, that led to the observation that there are T cells uh, that are responsible for cellular immunity. So in summary, B cells are responsible for humoral immunity and T cells are responsible for cellular immunity.